Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series, and in this video, I want to talk about making a powerful bullet that can shoot through many objects in a row in your SNET engine. So several weeks back, I made a video on how to create a gun that can shoot around, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bullet uh, that can shoot through many objects in a row. So first of all, let's create a use no window and add in a background. Uh, we want to first import a module, so from your SNET import star, and we could set our basic application apps to your snow then app that run now let's add in a background so i'll have a bg variable equal to an entity i'll set the model equal to a quad and i'll set the texture equal to an image in my assets folder called sky cloud.png and also i'll also set the scale equal to 20 on the x 8 on the y and I'll also set the Z position equal to 1. So if I save and run this, I now have a, a sky image as my background. Now let's create a bullet entity. So we have a bullet, and that's equal to an entity. We'll set the model equal to a quad. Set the texture equal to a bullet image, so bullet PNG. That's in my assets folder. I'll set the scale equal to 0.6 on the x, 1 on the y axis. And lastly, I'll set the z or the x position equal to negative 5. So if I save and run this, now we see a bullet on the left side of our window. Now we're going to create six ball entities. And to do this, we're going to use a trigger entity class. Now, entities created with the trigger entity class will be able to automatically call another function once certain conditions are met. And this is very useful for this project. So let's close this. And we have a, uh, let's create a balls list of none, but size six. And now we want to create six balls. So we use a for loop for that, for i in range six. Uh, we'll set balls in xi equal to trigger trigger targets and set equal to bullet. And this means that the balls entities will be triggered by the bullet entity. We'll set the model equal to a circle. And we'll set the x position equal to negative 4 plus i times 2. And this means that the balls will be two units apart with the leftmost one at the negative four position. And we'll set the color equal to red. So color is equal to color.red. And if I save and run this, let's see. This should be negative four plus i times two. Now we should see, and now we do see six red balls on the screen and our original bullet. So now let's add in an update function to move the bullet. Now the update function will be called automatically for each frame. Now in our update function, let's create it at the top, define update. And in this function, we're going to update the bullet's x, posi x position by time.dt multiplied by 2. Here 2 is going to be the bullet speed, and time.dt is a time passed since the last frame. So if we save and run this, we see that the bullet shoots from left to right. Now let's change the initial position of the bullet so that it's st it starts uh, out of the window. So instead of negative 5, let's set it to negative 8. And if I run this again, now the bullet started out of our window. So now we can create another function, consequence, that will be called and executed when the bullet hits a ball. And basically it will take an entity as an argument. So right underneath this update function, I'll create a consequence function with the parameter of balls. So the animation, um, an explosion animation, my assets folder. And this will basically animate an an explosion image sequence. I'll set the position equal to balls.x, balls.y. I'll set the scale equal to 2 on the x, 2 on the y. I'll set the frames per second 
equal to 20. What's the loop equal to false? We don't want to loop this. And I'll set the autoplay equal to true. And after this, we want to destroy the balls parameter. So this will basically just destroy the entity after the animation is run. So now let's trigger the consequence function when the bullet hits a ball. In our for loop, I'm going to call balls in xi dot on trigger enter and set it equal to func consequence with another parameter of balls i. So if I save and run this, we can see that when a bullet hits a ball, the ball will explode and disappear. And the bullet will keep moving and do the same for the rest of the targets. Now, I'm going to run this again. Now what happens is that when the bullet hits any ball, the consequence function will be called through the on trigger enter function. The on trigger enter is basically a function that comes with a trigger entity. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them below at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit the red button below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.